गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू दी एडियो सेट सी सी लाइव लेक्चर डियर फ्रेंड्स बेसिकली फॉर ऑल द स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ मास कम्युनिकेशन एंड जर्नलिज्म और वी कैन से दैट और फॉर ऑल द स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ एडवर्टाइजिंग टुडे वी हैव समथिंग वेरी वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग डियर फ्रेंड्स यू माइट हैव हर्ड अबाउट द टर्म सिमोटिक्स सिमोटिक्स इट इज साइंस ऑफ अंडरस्टैंडिंग साइंस एंड सिम्बल्स एंड द कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ मीनिंग हाउ सिमोटिक्स इज यूज इन एडवर्टाइजिंग और वी कैन से सिमोटिक्स इन एडवर्टाइजिंग i know you must be curious to know what basically semiotics in advertising is my dear friends i would like to tell you that today we have with us in our studios dr shatrat tomar he is research scientist uh, with consortium for educational communication as well as i would like to tell you all that um, uh, advertising is a his area of specialization and i hope that uh, uh, under his able guidance as well as uh, with his um, experience uh, we would be able to know what basically semiotics in advertising is so first of all i would like to welcome our guest dr shatru tomar and um, i would know that uh, and uh, i feel that uh, we are going to benefit from this particular lecture so welcome to the edc lecture Thank sir you. so what basically this semiotics is as we uh, can somewhat relate to it and uh, we can predict that it is basically a science but what kind of science it is yes today we would be discussing an important aspect uh, of uh, communication and to understand communication that is semiotics basically it's a study of uh, signs and symbols and uh, it operates in a particular uh, socio cultural context and uh, we have decided that today we would be studying um, semiotics in the context of advertising how semiotics can be used to understand and to appreciate advertising advertising uh, dear friends as you might know that it's an important constituent of uh, marketing and promotions <coughs> advertising is an important uh, form of uh, uh, communication uh, in terms of uh, it's a it's a very important commercial communication i would rather say so advertising uh, uh, is a um, phenomena that can sell uh, uh, goods the physical goods that can sell ideas or uh, that can sell services we have uh, abundant definitions of advertising but basically we have to understand that advertising is a process of uh, communication it's a process of establishing a rapport between the sender and the receiver uh, in the context of advertising we have to uh, Uh, consider the important constituents of the um, communication process that involves ad, um, in the sphere of uh, advertising so basically there is a sender and there is a receiver and then there is a message <coughs> message is very important in advertising not to say that other elements are least important but uh, since advertising is the way of storytelling uh, advertising is the way of uh, narrating your own story to the uh, readers uh, to the listeners to the viewers or to the readers so it's an um, uh, interesting way to tell your stories to reach out to them and to convince you to uh, um, convince you uh, for uh, um, getting the action done desired action done so uh, we will see that how semiotics is used in appreciating advertising and uh, in this uh, uh, discussion i would be discussing uh, the print advertisements we can have many advertisements like uh, we have transit advertisements we have outdoor advertisements we have tvc television commercials but in this discussion we would be limiting our discussion of advertisements and advertising to the print advertising print ads so we can start with <coughs> looking at the definition of semiotics actually the word semiotics is uh, derived from the greek word semion which means sign and is thus a science of understanding signs and symbols because our communication is very much symbolic in character and uh, uh, further during uh, this presentation we would see what exactly the sign is because it's very it looks very uh, simple but it's deceptively simple the sign has many connotations especially uh, in the tra tradition tradition of semiotics uh, cs pers an american logician described it as an interdisciplinary science in which sign systems manifested in structures and levels Uh, which could be analyzed from philosophical psychological and sociological as well as a linguistic point of view 
uh, CS Pars, he has presented his own uh, um, idea of uh, semiotics, which places semiotics as an interdisciplinary effort as opposed to uh, Ferdinand the Socio, who was a, a Swiss linguist. And uh, uh, though he also uh, um, hinted out that this uh, semiotics is, is uh, well beyond the uh, linguistic field, because uh, Socio was a, a linguistic basically and his work uh, is drawn from linguistics. So the application of semiotics is beyond linguistics, which is also agreed by Saussure and uh, which is also agreed by Peirce, C. S. Peirce. So, uh, <coughs> semiotics is also known as semiology, but semiology, uh, we, we can uh, interchange both the terms. Semiology is the term which was given by Saussure and the semiotics is the term which was given by uh, C. S. Peirce, who was, um, as I said, American um, logician and philosopher. So, it is a way of interpreting a text and a text which, uh, which could be anything, a text could be anything as Bath says text could be anything which um, it, 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 the text has its own story that the text lends itself to a meaning structure. So, basically if we try to interpret a text which virtually could be anything, which could be a story, it could, it could be a feature film or which could, which could be a ritual or it could be a tradition. So, anything is a text. So, in order to understand that particular text, we use a framework of understanding which, is, which we know as a, um, semiotics or semiology. So, we can try to understand what linguistic sign is or the sign is because Saussure he contributed in the linguistic field mainly. So, uh, when he described sign, he meant uh, uh, the linguistic sign. So, here is the structure of a sign. So, basically the sign consists of two things. One is sound image and another is concept. It is said that, that uh, the sound image is the physical aspect of sign. But as Saussure himself explained that sound image is not a physical characteristic. It is the it is the sound, uh, it is the mental image of a physical characteristic that uh, a listener or that a person has in his or her mind. That is the sound image, it is not physical. It could be sensory though, but it is not physical. The two, uh, the uh, another element is the concept. The concept is tied to the sound image. The two elements are intimately united and together we call them as a sign. So, basically the sign has two parts, uh, link, concept and the sound image. Sound image can lead to the concept and the concept can lead to the sound image. These are the um, quotes from the <coughs> uh, book of uh, book on linguistics that uh, Sosu wrote. I call the combination of a concept and a sound image a sign. So, he clearly states that a sign includes a concept and a sound image. But in current usage, the term generally designates only a sound image, a word for example, arbor. Arbor is a Latin word uh, and uh, it uh, exemplifies the image of a tree. I propose to retain the word sign the French of the word sign because basically he wrote the book uh, course on linguistics in French. <coughs> so, uh, uh, the word sign is signe in French and uh, he says that I propose to retain the word sign, signe also known as signe to designate the whole and to replace concept and sound image respectively by signified and signifier. So, he uh, view he views uh, the sign as composed of signifier and signified. So, basically if you go to the uh, back slide, sound image is the signifier and the concept is the signified. We can see the uh, scheme of things in this slide. Arbor is the signifier, it signifies something. What does it signify? The moment we listen to the word arbor. <coughs> 
we have a image in, in our mind of a tree. It's different thing that the tree might be um, of a different shape to the different person. Suppose if I listen to the word arbor, the image that is generated in my mind is of a tree. The tree might be of lemon tree, the tree might be mango tree, the tree might be neem tree, that is different story. But at least everybody is going to uh, uh, imagine, a, uh, imagine a picture of a tree whenever he or she listens to the word arbor. So, the imagination is the mental imagination is signified and the um, sensory input that is in the form of signifier, it is called a signifier. Now, C. S. Peirce, the American logician and philosopher, he describes that there are three types of signs. First type of sign is icon, the second type of sign is index and the third type is symbol. Icon, sign is something as we know that sign is something that is replaceable by something else. Sign is something that stands for something else. So, we have three types of signs, one is icon in which signifier and signified, they are in completely in tandem with each other. The uh, representation of signifier to the referent object is perfect. For example, if we are looking at the uh, picture of a person or a, a passport size photograph of a person, that that photograph or that photo resembles completely with the uh, actual person. So, there is no difference, we, immediately we can say that this, this photograph belongs to the uh, that person. So, there is completely resemblance of uh, signifier and signified. Now, the another type is index. Signify resembles with signified, but partially like a footprint in a sand. There is an example like if someone sees a footprint in the sand, so he or she is likely to um, uh, conclude that uh, th there was somebody who has just uh, moved on the, uh, uh, onto the clay or the sand, somebody was here. So, so uh, and we can also recognize that the footprints belong to a human being, if, if, that, is the si if that is the footprint of a human being. So, that is recognizable, we can uh, recognize the presence of a human being, but that uh, the footprint does not um, faithfully reproduces the size and the shape of the uh, foot of a person. Now, the third <coughs> type of uh, sign is symbol. Here, the uh, signifier does not resemble at all and we have to learn the relationship of the um, si signifier and signified. For example, traffic lights and languages. So, a uh, bread in, uh, in English language we, we call bread a bread. In French language, it is called pain. So, pain in French is uh, uh, bread and bread in English is bread. So, bread and pain, they are the same thing, but the concept is the same. But we are using the different words, different set of words, different set of letters uh, to describe the same concept. So, we have to learn that the pain pain is, uh, uh, is means bread in French and the uh, bread refers to bread in English. So, it has to be learnt. We have a photograph of um, former South African president late, uh, he died recently. So, um, though it has nothing to do with the celebrity status or we can say iconic status, it has nothing to do with that. It could be any face, any picture, any diagram it represents somebody and in this representation, the, the, the representation is quite faithful and um, the photograph of this person is immediately recognizable whenever we uh, had opportunity to see uh, Dr. Mandela or the person which the photograph is referring to. So, there is a faithful representation of the relationship. Index, I just uh, uh, mentioned it like these are the footprints of a human being. Everybody is guess that the, uh, uh, a person has walked through the sand. So, the, we are able to conclude by seeing the picture that uh, a, a human being was there. 
but it does not actually represent the shape and size of the foot, but it is a vague representation of the signifier and the signified. Now the third part is symbol. Symbolic sign is quite different in the sense that uh, uh, this uh, traffic light, whenever the traffic light is turned red, it means we have to stop. Yellow light is for waiting and green light is for is, is the signal to proceed, is the signal to go. Now the story is that uh, it's very, uh, there is no inherent and natural relationship between the red light and the stopping of our uh, movement. There is no inherent relationship between the color green and the fact that we have to stop, uh, we, sorry, we, we have to move on whenever the light is green. So the relationship is not uh, natural and uh, uh, it is not um, deducible from the color of the light and the activity we are supposed to do it. We have to learn it just like a language. So there are many features of sign like it is arbitrary as we have seen in the case of uh, um, symbolic representation that is being communicated through the traffic light. The relationship between the signifier and signifies is arbitrary. We could have placed the color, we could have replaced the color red with the color uh, purple or pink or any other color. So there is no relationship. The rules have to be learned. So uh, in that sense it is called that the relationship between the signifier and signified is arbitrary. Differential, it defines things by what they are not. <coughs> that is an important aspect of sign that uh, uh, the moment we say that something is there, it, we also are indicating to the fact that uh, something is not there. So sign, it says something, it shows something and at the same time it also indicates uh, to the uh, absence of something. Third is linear. So it being a, the uh, signifier being a sound image, it shows the linearity dimension as it unfolds in time. It moves along a time scale. We have an important uh, <coughs> concepts in the semiotic discussion. Uh, the discussion is about uh, paradigmatic and syntagmatic aspects of semiotic analysis. A syntagm is an order, orderly combination of uh, interacting signifiers which forms a meaningful whole within a text. They are sequential and therefore temporal like uh, uh, a speech or uh, a musical performance and they represent spatial relationships. Syntagm is thus is the combination of this and this and this. So it is a chain that moves forward and it, is com uh, it consists of, a, of different components and they are, it is a matter of juxtaposing various components along the time scale. First this happened and then this happened and then this happened. As we can say if there is a story, if we have a story like uh, in, it has events which uh, are, um, which uh, occur on, on a temporal scale. Suppose there was a king and, uh, and there was a queen and they had their children and the children grew up. So there is a sense of time, there was a king and then now the children and they grew up and they and then they became uh, adult and uh, uh, so this time, th this type of relationship is called uh, a temporal relationship and we have to place the events temporally. So we can say this and this and this, that is why there's, there's this metaphor is there. Suppose the dog, uh, we have an example, suppose there is a sentence, the dog is wagging, wagging its tail. This is a syntagmatic uh, aspects of semiotic analysis like we have placed the article the and then the do dog verb is there, <coughs> the uh, verb is there, uh, wagging is the verb, its tail is the noun. So the we have placed there is a particular sequence in which uh, we have formed this sentence first the, do the dog is wagging, wagging its tail. So we have a sequence and it's a, um, it moves from starting from the the and it ends with the tail. So this and this and this, this is the um, metaphor that goes with it. We have another aspect which is called a paradigm. It's a set of associated signifiers or signifieds 
which are all members of some defining category but in which each is significantly different. Signs are in paradigmatic relation when the choice of one excludes the choice of another. And again, if we compare it uh, in a metaphor, we can say that uh, this paradigmatic arrangement, it is a matter of arranging choices. And the one choice excludes another choice. So it shows that this or that or that or something else. It's a matter of choice. So we can say that it's a paradigmatic pro, uh, aspect of semiotic analysis. <coughs> we can uh, go to the uh, previous slide. We have an example, the dog is wa wagging its tail. Now this is the syntagmatic aspect of semiotic analysis, this is the syntagmatic sentence. If we want to change it to paradigmatic sentence, we have to consider various choices that the dog, the dog could be replaced with the cat, the cat could be, uh, the cat is replaceable with uh, another, uh, another noun, it could be buffalo, it could be lion, it could be uh, a child, it could be anything. So we have a choice of uh, replaceable segments and the, ch and the consideration of the choice of replaceable segments uh, lead us to the uh, discussion of paradigmatic aspects of semiotic analysis. The dog is, uh, similarly the verb is also um, changeable. We can change wagging, we can change the tail, the dog is, uh, um, uh, is moving its ear, so um, we, we can change the verb also. So every sequence is replaceable. If we consider the replaceability of various segments, we are into paradigmatic uh, analysis. This was all about semiotics. Now we would be considering semiotics as an investigative tool. We can conduct a research about uh, how to use semiotics as a method, as a paradigm and as a tool for investigating into advertising or advertising advertisement. It is a method which focuses on analytical integrity rather than on representativeness of the sample. This is an issue related with the sample. We have to choose sample in the research and the sample, uh, the sample choice is determined by the analytical integrity of the sample and note on the, we are not bothered about the representativeness of the sample, whether the sample is a representative. Uh, of the universe or not, that is not our concern. Our concern is that it should be analytical, analytical, uh, it should be, it should offer analytical integrity. The semiological approach stresses individual readings of messages, it does not lend itself to quantification of result. It is one of the important, uh, uh, important characteristic of semiotics when we use it as an investigative tool. It says that the message, if we are into analysis of messages, the analysis of messages won't, won't lend it itself to the quantification of results. I mean, uh, the, it means that we cannot, we cannot calculate mathematically the results. It has to be in a descriptive manner. Insights extracted from this approach are impressionistic. That is a very subject, subjective thing that uh, we form an impression when we study a, a particular sample, it is very, the, um, the learning is very impressionistic about the sample. S further, if we want to explore it as an investigative method and tool, it is a qualitative method. <coughs> now again, we can uh, uh, discuss this in the light of uh, that there are two paradigms uh, in the research methodology, one is qualitative paradigm and another is quantitative paradigm. Semiotics belongs to the qualitative paradigm and uh, if it comes to, if it belongs to quantitative, uh, qualitative paradigm that means it has some features that are shared with the, uh, that, has, that are common with the qualitative method. So it belongs to the interpretive paradigm which comes under qualitative method. We do not uh, calculate 
we do not fiddle with the numbers we do not fiddle with the statistics but we just interpret and uh, interpret a situation interpret a given situation interpret a given scenario it's our own interpretation it's the interpretation of the researcher and after all it is an interpretation as opposed to the scientific analysis and scientific calculations of a quantitative method we are just into interpreting things and interpretation is always subjective the method has roots in literary analysis when we are into we will see uh, when we will be attempting uh, semiotic analysis of ad advertisements so further in this uh, discussion we would see that the style of writing the style of analyzing a particular ad advertisement it uh, has its roots in the tradition of literary analysis we create a thorough and thick description of the our own understanding of particular advertisements now there is an another feature which is also the limitation of this semiotics which we also discussed and uh, pointed out many times that it cannot be re replicated because it is a very, very very subjective person if i am interpreting an ad in a particular way there are chances and it is most likely that another person would see and would visualize and would interpret and analyze that particular ad in a slightly different or maybe completely different way from the other person so no two implications no two deductions and generalizations of that ad no two readings of that ad are going to be similar so it's very subjective uh, and literary description of um, uh, the sample being studied the findings cannot be generalized <coughs> yes the uh, the findings cannot be generalized because it's a very uh, the sam uh, the problem is lies in the sampling process the sample which we employ the sampling strategy which we employ in semiotic analysis is most of the times judgmental sampling and on the basis of very few sample it's not possible to generalize our um, uh, results so that's why the uh, semiotics produces the uh, investigative report that cannot in the investigative findings that cannot be generalized semiotics is apt for reading between the lines if we can compare it with the another quantitative method content analysis we will find that the mechanics of content analysis depends upon the frequency counts so how much times a variable um, uh, shows a particular type of frequency so that is the mechanics of content analysis but as opposed to content analysis it is entirely a different thing <coughs> frequency count can show you a particular point that uh, um, how many people or how many uh, respondents they read newspapers or they read particular ads but how do they read it and uh, how far they are able to uh, understand the ad so it's a matter of semiotics investigation it's it won't be possible to inv investigate on those lines by using content analysis as our research methodology so it is the method which we use to employ which we employ uh, to investigate uh, um, advertising through semiotics as i said that uh, uh, this is a method research paradigm it's a research method and it's a, a research tool also for the data collection it's very subjective as i had already said subjective in the sense um, each person is likely to interpret it in, in a different way it sees the unintended sometimes it say um, we can say that is the criticism of the method so sometimes we can point out we can uh, think about those factors or those elements which were not earlier planned to be there or which their communicators did not think about it but we as an investigator might think about it might see them so sometimes we can see unintended factors and unintended uh, elements of an ad so that is a i mean uh, it's possible that it can happen <coughs> sometimes a person can uh, invent meaning or rather than discovering them suppose that there is an investigation uh, going on and uh, of, a, of a, uh, investigation about a particular ad suppose it is a perfume ad and um, uh, we can talk about the aspects of uh, advertising we can talk about the elements of advertising we can talk about the 
uh, semantics of advertising and about the those aspects of uh, um, semantics which the communicator of the message he did not really intend to um, to show uh, in the particular ad it is called that the matter is ma the method is non scientific though it's um, uh, it's, it's not uh, it's good it's good it's equally valid to be non scientific in some sense but the method however is being categorized as non scientific non repeatable that is the same thing that we cannot repeat the same set of understanding we cannot uh, if the person if the researcher changes if the situation changes if the nationality of the uh, re researcher changes it's not possible to repeat the same kind of understanding so um, basically it's the unique understanding of the researcher judgmental sampling and the non probability sampling <coughs> this is the sampling which we usually uh, employ while we uh, study Uh, while we are into the uh, investigation by way of semiotics uh, as the research method we choose our sample we choose our own sample on the basis of the fact that whether a particular sample it yields itself to the semiotic analysis or not whether it has the semiotic uh, semiotic inputs whether it has the semiotic uh, stimulus in it if it has the semiotic in, in uh, stimulus in it then we can consider it we can uh, choose it deliberately in a non uh, random fashion non probability fashion and uh, uh, it might be uh, the different kind of sampling but anyway it's not an invalid sampling it's a very much very type of sampling but uh, it's a, a critique they call the, uh, they criticize this method on the basis of uh, this type of sampling and this type of samplings are very much a representative of uh, qualitative research studies now we have elements of a print ad if you see we have a print ad here the print ad it has visuals it has a body copy it has a quite lengthy copy it has a headline and it also has a logo the uh, bethlehem steel so i think it's a very old adver advertisement of a steel company i think um, some 1914 ad so uh, it has a headline 66 six lakh tons of steel work so it's a headline it doesn't have any sub headline so uh, broadly we can discuss that the elements of a print ad is headline and the ad may have the sub headline it may have a body it depends if the if the advertisement is completely visual then it, it might not have any copy illustration and design the setup of uh, the, the the look of uh, the, or the arrangement of various elements in an ad or the illustration work or the graphic work of the uh, of the ad is illustration and design then we have the logo we have a logo clearly placed in this ad and then we have have visual the pictorial it is a very important one of the most important constituent or the element of a print ad is the visual <coughs> we would be discussing uh, few ads in the light of uh, uh, basically visual and we would be discussing how we can apply semiotic analysis to uh, ads which are basically lifestyle advertisements the print ads before we do that we have to understand that advertising as a communication practice as i had already discussed that advertising is a communication basically it is a communication from the uh, commercial message makers to the uh, prospective clients of the particular uh, product about which the message is message is being propagated the nature of advertising me message we have to understand that nature is high, is commercial and it is highly specified and the target we have in front of us are highly uh, specified and uh, very clear is there whether that ad targets to the older people whether the target ad targets to the rich people or the poor people <coughs> the consumer segmentation is taken into very much account uh, uh, and it affects the nature of advertising message that is being encoded so basically advertising is a process of communication 
that is to be achieved on the lines and the principles of uh, uh, communication of an effective or an effective communication. So, an effective advertising automatically means that uh, it is an effective communication practice. The uh, advertising message is highly persuasive. We have to be persuasive. We cannot afford to be. Uh, we cannot afford not to be persuasive. And the persuasion is sh or should be very indirect and subtle. If we are directly uh, into, uh, if we are into directly persuasion or in the, if we are into direct persuasion or something of our ideas or um, any other thing. That means the, it, it won't work. People like the uh, the quiet play of the subtle messages. It is often latent and nuanced. The motive is uh, uh, is not very much clear. The message is hidden and latent so that we can it can create shimas on our minds, which are ready-made references of uh, our behavior. Not limited to positive feedback, but warrants desi desired action. In our communication, we uh, we have a uh, circular communication model which says that a feedback completes the cycle of communication. But the advertising as a communication, it goes beyond the feedback. It not only wants the positive feedback, but positive feedback goes beyond it and uh, it goes up to the desired action because there is an uh, 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 motive of com communication of uh, ad advertising message. The message prompts us or the message persuades us to buy idea or to buy some product. That sale has to be done, that, 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 that the purchasing of the uh, idea or the purchasing of the message has to be achieved and in that sense the communication becomes complete in, in advertising uh, communication. It does not limit itself to uh, merely positive feedback. It goes beyond that. So, uh, as I just discussed that it creates shemas in our minds. Shemas are the ready-made or uh, ready-made references of our behavior and attitude. So, it helps in laying the patterns of our shemas. Now, how to apply semiotics to advertising? How to apply? Basically, we have to take care of few facts. It is a semiological analysis of an advertising image that entails the deployment of a highly refined set of concepts. Concept and the deployment and the thinking of those concepts have to be come from the side of a researcher, which produce detailed accounts of the exact ways of the meanings of an image are produced through that image. Gillian Rose <coughs> has a uh, uh, given this uh, piece of uh, thought that uh, the idea that uh, the um, we have to use we have to think of the concept which help us unearth the meanings of an image the imagery of that image we have to read that image precisely and in an intuitive uh, in, in an intuitive way though another uh, approach is that the semiological approach stresses individual readings of the messages it does not lend itself to quantification of results that we have discussed earlier also that uh, it, 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 it stresses upon the individual readings of the messages and the sample size is very less and uh, the uh, result or the report that is being generated it cannot be quantified. Semiology cannot be applied with, success, with equal success to all points of ads that is quite an important uh, uh, factor we have to keep in our mind while we are applying uh, applying semiotics as a research method in the field of advertising. <coughs> there might be 100 ads, there might be few ads which are more semiotically pregnant than some other ads. So, the semiotic quotient of one ad might be uh, uh, more or less than uh, um, other ads. So, semiologically cannot be applied with equal success to all points of ad. There are some ads which are more easy to, uh, they are more um, easy to, um, uh, they are more likely to uh, generate f uh, more meanings. So, uh, not all ads can do that. It depends and we have to judge our um, capability of reading 
capacity of reading that particular ad, we have to judge that whether this ad lends itself to the semiotic analysis or not, whether this ad lends itself to the semiotic analysis in a better way or not. So, uh, it's all, it all it all depends upon our own uh, uh, justification. The images chosen as a sample for semiotic analysis are then analyzed by finding out synonyms or the smallest unit of meaning. Now, if we want to analyze the those particular ads, we can break the ad into different units of meaning that we call synonyms. And those synonyms, they convey a meaning and the meaning is discussed in a, uh, in a, a deeply uh, literary and uh, psychoanalytical way and to bring out the hidden structures which work during the their interpretation by the readers. <coughs> so, basically we have to work upon the structures that are hidden in a particular advertisement. So, basically it is a work of uh, unearthing or bringing in light those hidden structures and the, the fact of bringing the hidden structures takes us to the paradigmatic analysis of uh, uh, paradigmatic aspects of semiotics which explores not only presences but it also explores the absences. This is an ad which appeared in the uh, print media in the newspaper and this ad is about uh, apartments that are available for uh, uh, purchasing. So, in this ad there is a prominent uh, uh, I am explaining to you how we can read ad, how we can understand an ad under the uh, by using the tools of semiotic analysis. What we are doing now is the part of semiotic analysis. We are semiotically analyzing the particular ad. So, the ad it is the, we can say that uh, the ad has a visual, the ad has a uh, headline, the ad has the copy, the, the, the copy is not large, we have uh, the logo and we have the visual. So, the copy part, we will not be focusing much on the copy part, though the copy part is optically very much balanced. We would be focusing, we would be applying specifically the knowledge of uh, and the tools of semiotics with reference to the visuals that appear in these type of lifestyle ads. <coughs> if we are to analyze the visual, so we can deduce from the visual that a couple is sitting on the green grass besides a river and the sky is there and the greenery is there, we have a lot of greenery and the sky is being reflected in the river. We have a situation here, situation is that the female is leaning on the shoulders of male and the male here is being shown as a very sturdy male with very broad shoulders. So, what does it signify? It is the signifier. If we talk about in terms of uh, semiotics, this is the signifier and the broad shoulder is the synonym, is the smallest unit of meaning that creates meaning. So, the synonym is the broad shoulder of the male partner. What does it signify? The broad and sturdy male shoulders, they signify that the, uh, the male is dominant, the male is full of strength, the male is typical male with strong masculine strength and he is sitting quite uptight, upright. So, and he is giving support to the female partner. So, in a sense, this picture of male does not represent only male. This is the only one thing, this is the presence. And what does it refers to? It refers to something else, it refers to the apartment itself. Like the way he is giving shelter or the way he is supporting the female partner. J.P. Greens or the particular promoter of this uh, 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 apartments, they want to convey that their apartments, they will give shelter in the same way and they will be very comfortable, they will be very cozy 
for the cause of the couple and especially the female and they are very strong because that uh, as reflected by the <coughs> broad shoulders and the upright uh, posture of the male so that is the that is the beyond the, that is called the beyond the lines reading that is called the between the lines reading this visual has also the natural elements in that and the natural elements is that the water is there all the basic elements that are necessary for our survival they also want to uh, want to express that their apartments are just as natural and as open as a natural place because there is not a, even a single apartment in the visual and still they are selling the uh, apartment so what does it mean <coughs> Actually, they are not selling an apartment, they are just selling an uh, experience. They are selling a piece of uh, or a slice of nature that is visible or that is accessible through their apartment. Uh, because apartments, they are considered to be very concreteish, they are very um, alienating, apartments are very, um, uh, at the extreme we can say very dehumanizing in the sense. So. Uh, so, in order to break all those conceptions, in order to break all those connotations, natural imagery is being just posed in the context of the couple. And also there is a symbolic representation or the symbolic meaning of the river in this particular ad. <coughs> Rivers have, play, have played an important uh, role and part in the um, um, nurturing of uh, various civilizations. All the civilizations have been uh, came into existence on the banks of rivers only we it uh, any type of civilization you think of any type of civilization and they are they are and they uh, they saw their day on the banks of rivers so a river in the, that sense that's very symbolic that uh, um, their apartments would be very comfortable and uh, very uh, Mm, historical in that sense. So, we have more synonyms, we can find more synonyms. One another synonym is that the lady that is shown here, she is wearing uh, red slippers or um, sandals, whatever you can say, slippers. And these slippers, they are uh, worn in the confines of an apartment. They are not meant for outdoor wearing. So, through this synonym, the advertiser or the communicator, they want to say that you would be as comfortable um, uh, in your apartment as you are comfortable with the nature. So, that is a, uh, a very important signifier. Uh, add to that, that the she is wearing the red top and it reflects the vibrant and the uh, it, 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 it associates itself with the fire. If you look at the uh, heading India's first wish town at Noida. This wish town term is written in color black. Color black has been used to um, uh, describe this wish town. Now why black? Because the, the headline they have given the most acquisite life awaits you. It's in green. Their uh, um, logo is in uh, mostly in green color. And they have had the India's first wish town at Noida. This is in uh, green color except the two words wish town. This wish town, this wish is something magical. Wish is something very transformatory. So there is a con need to connect the wish town with the with sort of some magical or mysticism or uh, as we as, as it is recognizable through black magic and all so that's why this color is black <coughs> so we are just attempting the semiotic analysis of uh, a visual of a of an ad which uh, tries to sell the uh, property or apartments so this is how we go about it we have to find the synonyms we have to find the synonyms that are present we have to find the synonyms that are absent and that is the uh, importance uh, of uh, doing semiotic analysis we have to talk about the present uh, the synonyms which are present we have to talk about the synonyms that are 
absent and that is why this uh, paradigmatic aspect is very important in terms of semiotic analysis of uh, advertisements. We can look at the another advertisement. Look, this ad, this ad, this is not a, this is not just an ad, this is a story, this is a narration, this is a story about a couple, this is a story about a couple that is not living in, probably that is not living in a joint family, this is a story of a couple that is, uh, it might be um, newly married and uh, this is a newly found love of a couple that is being manifested in the context of uh, some commodity that is twin door refrigerator. The twin door refrigerator is a quite uh, in terms of middle class it is very uh, upper class thing twin door refrigerator it is not very common in middle class. So the setting of the class the, cl the refrigerator it automatically sets the context of the context of the uh, advertisement. <coughs> This product belongs to the elite class and to complement the concept, the uh, kitchen is all replete with uh, modern paraphernalia that, that has a very elaborate chimney and um, it has uh, some microwave uh, open, uh, ovens and all. And the important signifier is the, uh, on this table lies there is, a, there is a bowl with green salad and the salad is quite exotic. That is not the cucumber salad, that is not the traditional onion salad and all. It is very, very um, lettuce, I think it is the lettuce salad and uh, the lettuce salad is quite uh, a new entry in the discourse of uh, food, especially in Indian context. <coughs> the lettuce, it is a very exotic in that sense, it is not a high, it is not a very common sight to see the lettuce salad. And another important synonym in this thing is that uh, uh, the, the grapes, grapes be it literary text or be it some ancient text or be it the story of kings and queens, the grapes have been very important and strong metaphor of love. And this image that uh, the, the male, he is offering grapes, he is uh, offering grapes to the, he is the nurturer, he is the breadwinner, he is the offerer of those grapes to the female. So he is the caretaker, he is in the lead, he is in the command, he is in, in charge of the all affairs. But that couple is uh, quite happy uh, in the context of um, um, elite relationships. So this is how we achieve uh, and also in this visual <coughs> we have a table and the geometry of table is placed in such a way that our eyes optically are being led to the refrigerator. If we look at the left of this ad. We will see that uh, the uh, we will see the table emer emerging from the left, and uh, it goes to the right, right up to the uh, refrigerator. It leads us to the refrigerator. So these are the cues, and this is how we read uh, uh, ads semiotically. We work upon the absences, we work upon the presences and we work, we try to find, we try to discover the synonyms, the pro pro possible synonyms and what does uh, the ad says beyond the uh, present. We have another ad for uh, uh, semiotic analysis. This is a watch from a, a very uh, a reputed company, it is very uh, costly watch. The visual of this watch is quite interesting. The male in this, the male model in this uh, visual is slightly kept out of focus and the female model is um, uh, in focus, very in precisely fo in focus. So the male is being absented from the visual through non diegetic means of uh, blurring. So blurring is the non diegetic means of uh, uh, creating an absence of the male. And also in the same visual, the we can see that the uh, uh, male is sleeping. So diegetically in the story itself, the male is absent from the scene. So the absence of the male is being achieved <coughs> through uh, diegetic and non diegetic means. 
and the diegetic means is that the male is being is is shown is shown sleeping and the non diegetic mean is that the uh, his absence is being achieved partial absence is being achieved through uh, the uh, blurring the the lady and the couple the couple the lady the lady model she is giving in camera looks and uh, the interpretation of these looks are this is uh, we can put it in quotes that it might it is a fairly pleasing promiscuous looks that is quite identical with the high class and the high class society and high class culture so the uh, individual look that is not the combined look of both the models that model is giving um, some individualized and uh, alienated and promiscuous this promiscuity uh, is related with the uh, elite culture and the rich culture so the eliteness is being resurrected through these uh, sentiments so this sentiments uh, especially if you, if you also see the uh, graffiti style uh, headline that's that says me so me is very individualized uh, mm, feeling it, it, it represents an individualized feeling that's why the person the uh, her partner is sleeping and she is there she is the me just the me is left very individual type of things so this is how we um, uh, achieve uh, semiotic analysis we have Though we have few more ads, and in the same way we can uh, analyze uh, on the semiotic traditions. So uh, we can conclude that the process of analyzing an ad through semiotics is like a criminal investigation of a photograph. If we are engaged in some criminal investigation of a photograph, it we look for clues, we look for oddities, we look for presences, absences, focusing on the on both the paradigmatic and syntomatic constructions. <coughs> It's akin to finding clues on, uh, on the uh, criminal investigation lines. Semiotics can be used effectively to read and add unearthing a new shades of meaning. It gives a new interpretation of meaning and new shades of meaning uh, uh, to an ad. It is a qualitative investigation a la literary and psychoanalysis. It involves the literary description, psychoanalysis, and the, it involves the thick description and uh, it, uh, uh, it is an investigation, it is a uh, research about finding synonyms and the meaningful unit of meanings in uh, an ad which is a text and which lends itself to many interpretations. So this is how we can achieve semiotic analysis in the context of uh, print advertisings which are dominantly visual. I think that is it. With this note, uh, thank you sir, thank you so very much uh, for elaborating in detail uh, what is semiotics and uh, how it is useful in advertising as you explained that uh, it is a very good investigative, uh, uh, investigative tool. Uh, but the question here is a very, in just few words, please explain, uh, could this uh, semiotics be used in uh, research analysis also? It's a method of, I just said, it's a, it's a research method actually. Mm -hmm. It's a research method, it's a research paradigm, it's a research tool, all in one. So, it, in the light of this semiotics, we can achieve the analysis of uh, advertisements, not only adver ad advertisements, we can analyze a story, we can analyze a real life situation. So, it's uh, every situation or every text is Mm, we can interpret in the light of semiotics every text and anything can be a text rituals is a text suppose there is a festival we have holy christmas or Eid, and we have rituals we have traditions all these rituals traditions festivities they are all text and they are they offer uh, they open up a pandar of meanings actually Thank you, sir. Thank you so very much because we Welcome. have uh, no time left with us and uh, hope that in future also we would be conducting similar kind of uh, lectures through which uh, we would be able to know more through you. Thank you, sir. Thank Welcome. you so very much.